Hey, welcome to our OSU Rio live streaming Thursday telecast. Each week we present different kinds of themes, and this week it's on culture. Uh, we at the Ohio State University South Center collaborate with the University of Rio Grande and Rio Grande Community College in providing a variety of different educational programs that promote small businesses, uh, business educational programs, students, agricultural programs, business organizations, and individuals that come from different uh, countries. Our mission is to provide educational programming regarding our growing communities in Southern Ohio, in the state of Ohio, and surrounding states on a global basis. Uh, behind the scenes is Kimberly Ralph. Uh, she's our program moderator and uh, technician, along with Dwayne Rigsby, uh, technology specialist, and Mike Thompson, uh, uh, Director of the Instruction Design and Media Services. Today, it's our, our fortune to be able to talk with Paul Pei, or uh, in his native country of China, Yi Ping. Uh, and he's going to be sharing with us different points and, and different things about what it is like to live in China. Uh, I always like these cultural programs because it really gets us to really know that even though we're a large world, we do live in an area where um, uh, each one of us are, are people. And, and it's nice to see different things. So I want to welcome Paul or Yi. Paul, welcome. Hi. W welcome Good morning. To the program. Uh, Paul, Good morning, Columbus. Hello, uh, Buckeyes. It's really great. I appreciate you coming on the program. Tell us a little bit about you. Oh, um, I come from China, and, and I'm an English teacher, and now I'm a visiting scholar at OSU. And I will be here for six months, which means I'm going to leave in two months. So, so, so. we'll be going back to China? Yes, I haven't got back home oh, okay. in two months. Hey, and I, I understand that uh, you have a, a sweetheart here that you married, what, three years ago? And you have a... Yes, that's here. right. Oh, very good. Very good. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so, so tell us a little bit about uh, what, what it's like to... Where are you from? Um, uh, tell us where, where you originally are from in China. Well, I'm from Jinzhou, and uh, Jinzhou is my hometown, and I grew up there. Uh, it is uh, in southern Hubei, China, located on the banks of the Yangtze River. Yangtze River is the longest river in the world, as we all know, and its total population, I mean the whole city, was about 5 million people. Wow. The city, yes, all right. You know, it's, it's interesting, in, in the United States, we only have mm -hmm. around four or five, um, may, maybe maybe a little bit more, cities with over a million population. But in China, it's my understanding you have over a hundred cities with a million people or more. That's right. That is the reason why I came to Columbus. I find it is not that crowded and not that big, <laughs> even though it is the 15th largest uh, city in okay. USA. I think it's a little bit small, uh, smaller than Jinzhou, and uh, the people are fewer here. Huh. Uh, and <laughs> and it's, it's rather interesting. Yeah, I would imagine that you came to a small rural city. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you said that you grew up in a city with 12 million people, is that correct? Um, five, not twelve, five oh, units. Five, okay. Five. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, what, what are some differences that you notice between our cities and your city? Like, like for instance, uh, public transportation. Uh, it seems um, that whenever I go to Columbus, Ohio, there are a lot of cars. Uh, and um, do you have traffic jams and, and problems? And, in China, like we have here in the United States? 
Well, the traffic problem nowadays in Jinzhou is much heavier than Gelenburg, I think. And uh, for another thing is that the public transportation, I think, is um, quite convenient in Jinzhou. But I think in Gelenburg, it's not that convenient. Yes. Yeah. Even though I think Gelenburg has a very good transportation in USA. Yeah. That, that is true. It, it, it seems that uh, we, we do have a, a bus line up there and probably some other things, but uh, uh, it is still difficult to get around in larger cities because everyone is uh, driving their car. Do you, do you have a lot of cars, people that own cars? Um, the private cars are more and more popular in the city of Jinzhou, actually in all the cities of China, and uh, we are getting crowded uh, year by year. Huh. But I think uh, we are also solving this problem. We're trying to uh, build more roads, and uh, we are trying to uh, call on us to use public transportation. Yeah, yes. that, and that does, that does make sense. Um, mm -hmm. so, uh, it, it's my understanding that you brought a video what is this video about? Well, uh, the video I would like to share with uh, everybody here is um, one kind of traditional Jinzo food. Oh. And it's for the breakfast and is quite popular in Jinzo. And it is unique because only in Jinzo you can enjoy such kind of food for breakfast. Oh. So. It will last for four minutes, I think. Jinzhou, Zuyou, Wang Huachibangu 且口味兼具,北方之浓厚,西南之麻辣,华东之绵甜。It's some kind of noodles, but because I can't see here from the screen uh, what the uh, video is playing now, I, I can only give a... Uh... Yeah, we're going to try to try to show you. Yes, this one is good. Yes. Yeah, so, so here, here you have, now, what is this, wheat, rice, what kind of dough is that? Yes, now they are, uh, in the video now, it's giving the um, general introduction to the Chinese, to the Jinzhou food here. Oh, okay. Right now, the video. Yeah. Okay. And, and give the general introduction to the things they would like to eat in the city. Huh. And as you can see, we have uh, we, we, we have English subtitles, and in the subtitle we can find that yeah okay. yes here is the whole title breakfast in Jinzhou. Oh. Yes, that is the name of the video. Yes, and uh, this is a place where the the food I would like to introduce to you. Yes, this is a restaurant in Jinzhou, and they sell a kind of noodles for okay. breakfast for local people. And uh, uh, in Chinese, we call this kind of noodles zao tang mian. Huh. Mm -hmm. and, and so what is this? Uh, yes, now here comes the origin of this kind of food, zao tang mian. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so as, as we're looking at the different pictures, et cetera, um, right. uh, let's see, the, the man is, um, I, I can't read the, the words, etc. But what, mm -hmm. what, is, what is this picture about? Uh, which picture? So now the, the video is playing. Oh, okay, well, so we, we just sort of moved on. And here's some of the different foods. Mm -hmm. And what is unique about these foods? Is it... Uh, uh, wheat, rye, rice, bread? Uh, so, now we are focused 
and the pitch there, right? So what pitch are we playing now? Um, let's, let's see, they're, they're eating food. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like noodles of some sort. Long yes, that's meat. right. Yes, they are, they are eating the um, typical Jinzo food, zao tan mian. It's a kind of noodles. And here we have um, uh, different individuals standing in line waiting for their order, I would say. Uh, yeah, all that's different right. kinds of customers. Yes, they are waiting and they are waiting for the time to uh, take their piece of noodles. Huh. Very good, very good. Uh, and now here is the owner of, of the noodle restaurant. And uh, she is welcoming everyone else to uh, come to his restaurant and oh. to Jinzhou. <laughs> Very good. That's all. Oh, okay. Uh, so mm -hmm. what, what we'll do is we'll come back here. Uh, all right. Um, would you please stay uh, on the screen? Yes, good. I can see, so that I can see. Good. Very good. Thank you. Yes. Uh, hit, hit your space bar there. Yes. Wait. All right. There we go. There we go. Uh, and I, I, uh, so do you miss the food, or do you like American food, or does it take it, take some time to get used to it? Um, I'm sorry, I can't hear you clearly. Oh, so okay. You the American food uh, uh, is it a lot different from the Chinese food from what we just saw. Uh, do you uh, miss your food? That's right. Yes, the American food is quite different from Chinese food. Uh, actually speaking, I'm still getting used to the uh, American food. And uh, is it more spicy or less spicy? American um, food? I, I, uh, what I can say is that American food is quite different in taste from uh, our local food in China. And... Um, but the most of the things I would like to see is that uh, it has a lot of cheese in it. A lot of cheese? Yeah, it has oh. a lot of cheese, and uh, sometimes it's too sweet. Oh, okay. All right. And sometimes it's too oily. Oh, well that, makes, that makes sense. I, I never gave that much thought. Uh, you know, I, when I grew up, uh, uh, we sort of had a German heritage where you had mashed mm -hmm. potatoes or some kind of potatoes almost to mm -hmm. every meal. And I'll be quite frank with you, my wife was the one that introduced rice to me when I was uh, uh, 22, 23 years old. I had never really? had rice before. Uh, so, it, it, you know, and, and we, we constantly have rice. Uh, and, and it's a really good product, but some of the other other kind of noodles and, and things of that nature. Um, mm -hmm. So if we go to a Chinese restaurant, it, mm -hmm. does it does it have the same kind of food that you eat over there? If if we went to a Chinese um, restaurant, you mean in USA? When I go to a Chinese restaurant, right? Yeah. Yeah. And American Chinese restaurant or a real Chinese restaurant. Are, are they, do you, do you find that their food matches what you um, would eat over there? To some extent, they match, they, they match. Yes, to some extent. Uh, we have some same food we can find in American Chinese restaurant. Oh, okay. But if you want to eat some pure, original local food, I think the best way is go to China. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's true. You you had brought some other pictures, uh, right? Uh, you know about the Chinese culture and the, the heritage, etc. Uh, uh huh. Um, and let, let's see if Ting can put up. And here we have what is this? Can you see this? It's yeah, a, a large that, building. That is one thing I would like to uh, introduce to you. Uh, is the Jinzhou Museum. It's a, it's a museum in my hometown. It has on display a well-preserved 2,000-year-old male corpse. 
Oh, okay. display a silk and the leftwear from the orange days period because um, as maybe you don't know Jinzhou is a city of history just like Xi'an in China which is more more popular uh -huh. oh, very uh -huh. good. yes I would like to introduce some kind of history of Jinzhou to you and um, Jinzhou was the capital of 20 kings over 400 years of the state of Chu during the spring and autumn and the warring states period of the Zhou dynasty, which was from um, 1046 BC huh. to uh, 256 BC, I think. Wow. And the Jinzhou has very old city walls, which is said to have been built with earth by General Guan, uh, Guan Yi in the Three Kingdoms period. Hmm. And it was the capital of several different states during some different Asian periods in China. That is the brief introduction of the history of Jinzhou. <laughs> yes, this is the picture of the city gate and the, the city wall. So the, the city gate um, yes, and this is the moat, the moat, the river to protect the city, the moat, and the the, the old city wall. The city wall was re was rebuilt in um, 1646 and measured nine meters high and ten meters thick. The city wall extends for um, 5.8 miles, and the wow. city walls, city gates, was towers and the battlements have all been well maintained. As you can see, this is the Easter Gate of Jinzhou. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. And this is a lot of picture of the beautiful scenery of the city wall. Hmm. And, and, yeah. and again, when yeah, was this it built? Is, uh, uh, every year in the uh, Dragon Boat Festival, we have the Dragon Boat competition in the moat. <laughs> huh. And... Yes, this is the uh, larger than Tang area, Da Shi, um, and this is take, this, this picture is a little bit old. It was taken um, five to ten years ago, but that is the real setting of the downtown area of, huh. of, of I, I, I noticed I noticed that there is a um, McDonald's on the right. right. Yes, McDonald's. Uh, came to Jinzhou about 20 or 25 years ago. <laughs> and you can see we have so many buses, so many cars and the taxis. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is the um, light view, the vibrant light view of the That city. is a very pretty picture. Yes. And uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is a newly built shopping mall. Uh, the shopping mall, the shopping mall is um, um, in the center of the downtown area. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a large view of the shopping mall. It is underground. It's an underground shopping mall to save the pay, <laughs> to save the space. Does, it's underground. Uh, th does Chinese use credit cards, debit cards, like in the United States? Yes, of course. Cash, credit cards, debit cards can all be used. Oh, okay. Yes, as you can see, we have a supermarket named the Walmart, just like in USA, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> every every place has a Walmart. So I, I think uh, uh, American people might find something familiar in my hometown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, McDonald's and Walmart. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes. This is another thing I'm gonna to introduce to us. Um, is um, I say um, this one is a pagoda, and uh, the Chinese name is Wan Shou. It's Wan Shou Pagoda. Oh. Uh, Wan Shou in Chinese means to live ten thousand years long for the king, and uh, the tower was built in um, fifteen eighty uh, uh, fifteen forty eight A.D. I think by one emperor of Ming dynasty named uh, Jia Jin, and he 
built the pagoda to celebrate his mother's birthday. Huh. Very nice. Yeah, this is uh, the pagoda from a larger angle. Yes. The other one. And the near the pagoda, we can find the bridge. Huh. Yes. These are the central, uh, downtown area of Pinzhou. Uh, in, uh, in this is uh, one district, Sashi district of Pinzhou. Actually, Pinzhou has two uh, downtown area. One is Sashi, the other is Pinzhou. Um, mm, yes, the old Pinzhou city. Pinzhou city, Pinzhou city, As Kim is loading up more pictures, etc. Um, what, what's it like li living, growing up in, in China? Uh, I, I know that you have school systems that you, you attended. Um, are there similarities between what we have in the United States, uh, in the school systems, the primary, the secondary, the high school? Uh, I, I'm assuming in, in China you also have primary schools and, and high schools. Is it pretty much the same? Um, I'm not quite familiar with the USA, American educational system, but I think it's quite the same or similar. And after six years old, you have to go to primary school, uh, and it will last for six years. And after that, you go to a junior middle school for three years. And these nine years of education in China is compulsory, I think. And it's free. Yeah. And, and after that, you go to high school for three years. And after that, you can come to college as long as you pass the national college entrance examination. Huh. Again, um, you know, various different uh, uh, countries uh, help students to s select the, the path. It just seems to me in, in the United States, uh, mm -hmm. we, we take a 15, 16-year-old person and say, okay, let's make a decision. You're going to go to this university and you're going to do this. And mm -hmm. oftentimes, students don't have a really good perspective of what is available. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, what's, what's your thoughts on that? Do, are we pushing our, our young ones too quickly into occupations? Hmm. Well, um, I think it's a personal choice, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, in China, most of the time, uh, the young people uh, should go through the whole education process from the nine years compulsory and three years high school and uh, four years in the college or universities. And uh -huh. these, uh, they think that is the way it should be. Yeah. <laughs> after that, after the graduation of college, they, they, they may think, oh, it's time for me to uh, find a job. Or maybe some of them will further their study. Yeah, that, that's mm -hmm. true. That's a good point. Uh, Kim has some additional pictures here. Um, mm -hmm. uh, well, this is that is uh, because Jinzhou is... Um, is a city located at the north bank of Yangtze River. So every summer, so many people go to Yangtze River to have a good bath or huh. have a good swim. <laughs> oh, very yes, good. this is one picture. Huh. Yes, just just like a beach, right? Yes, and these are the um, place for our traditional food to serve. It's a whole street of different local food here. I see. Mm -hmm. yes, this is another picture of the food street. Yes, and we call it street food, different street food. Yes, then we have, I would like to uh, talk about some the celebrities of Jinzhou. And this one, is, uh, this boy's name is Cheng Long, and uh, he is a badminton player. Actually, he is the um, champion winner, championship winner in the recent, most recent Rio Olympic Games for badminton. So badminton is uh, considered a major sport? 
Um, one of the major sports, I think. The okay. other one is um, table tennis, I think. Huh. Yeah. And All right. Th this gentleman. Yeah. Now this lady. And, and this lady, this beautiful lady's name is Yuan Quan, and she is a very famous and uh, Chinese movie actress. Oh. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, the picture from her most recent movie, Call of Heroes. And uh, she is from Jinzhou. This girl grew, grew up in, in Jinzhou. Yes, yeah. good. This is one type of Zhao Tan Mian, which I have introduced. We have watched the video. <laughs> OK. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's a lot of type of Zhao Tan Mian. Yes. And this is what we call, uh, it's, it's a lot of traditional Jinzhou food, lotus root with pork chops. Right. And this is fish cake, and it's made of grass carp. It's a kind of fish. And it's also a local food, fish cake. But it is not sweet, it is sweaty. Ah. All right. And uh, this is crawfish. I think it's interesting. Crawfish originated from USA, but now it's quite popular in China. Huh. Yeah, I, I know that uh, you know some of the ponds and streams. We have a lot yes. of crawfish. Right. And this is local sausage. Local sausage. Local sausage. Wow. Right. And this is what we call the sorti um, donut. Sweet donut. It's made of uh, rice. Yes, and is a. Uh, and this one is a kind of dessert. It's coated shrimp. Huh. And because you, you, uh, you can say the uh, the food uh, the, the white the white food in in the bowl is like sh shrimp, right? And actually, it, it, it's made of rice, <laughs> and it's kind of dessert. It's sweet and it's quite delicious, especially in summertime. We would like to have this cold shrimp. Huh. And this is a sweet and a sour pork rib, which is quite popular, not only in Jinzhou, but around China. Sweet and a sour pork rib. Huh. And this one is quite typical. Uh, I think I can translate it like uh, seasoned steamed pork. This kind of pork. Y your, main, your main meat is pork, or is it Chicken it's or pork. is it uh, beef? Pork. pork. Pork? Pork, yes. And the last one, this one is meatball. Uh, but it is coated with sticky rice. So we can say meatball coated with sticky rice. Oh, very nice. Very nice. <laughs> uh, makes me sort of want to go um, and get some food. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul, we only have a a minute or two left, etc. cetera. Um, would, if, if I were uh, wanting to go over to China, uh, what do you think I would find over there? What, what uh, uh, I, I know when you came to the United States, you had expectations, and then you found you know, diff different kinds of things. What, what, what do you think I would be, uh, where I, you know, we know about the white, the, the, the wall, Great Wall, but the people. What, what would we find that would impress us? Mm. I think, uh, for one thing, as I, uh, for the most of uh, of the interview I've introduced, the food will impress foreigners, because I think um, in different cities of China we have different taste of food, and you. It is amazing to find that the food from one part of China is quite different from another part. And uh, I can use one word, diversity of food in China will surprise foreigners. But I think um, by making different kind of food, that is how Chinese people express their love for their family, for their life, and for the future. Well, that, make, that makes a lot of, a lot of sense. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, I, I know that most of your your food really looks delicious, uh, and <laughs> uh, 
I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to going to a Chinese restaurant. Uh, I'm going to uh, grab Wanda, my, my wife, uh, tonight. And we'll go out and, and enjoy some of the, the food, even though it may not be exactly like what you have. But maybe. But I do. Uh, in, I, but I do I like would like to invite you to China to have some pure and real Chinese food. Well, I love to do that. Love to do that. And we'll I know that China. your wife, your family, uh, are, are going back. Uh, and I, I hope that perhaps we could uh, uh, Skype you over there in uh, one of our, our programs. I know that you have a. Uh, a master's, I believe, in, in English, uh, mm -hmm. and that you're teaching uh, college, or you're teaching students over here uh, as sort of an internship program or, or some sort. What do you hope to do over in China? I'm sorry? What, 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 what will you be doing when you go back to China? Yes, go back to China. I will continue my teacher's career and uh, uh, I will um, use the technology I have uh, experienced here um, to uh, enhance my teaching, and uh, I will um, have a more, um, I think, insightful perspective of the culture differences, and I will introduce the different cultures in USA to my students. Well, I think that's great. Uh, I, I, I know that. Uh, uh, whenever we have uh, someone from another country come in and, and educate us, uh, mm -hmm. it really comes down to we're all people. We just have certain things, certain ways of doing things. That's that's. Uh, mm -hmm. um, but all of us uh, like to be treated with dignity and respect. And if that's right. the case, then we treat those individuals back with dignity and respect. So. Yes. Uh, Paul, any parting words, any wisdom you want to want to share with the listening audience? Um, I think no more. I would just like to uh, extend my warm welcome to um, all of the uh, people who is now focusing on this video. Please come to China and have a look. Welcome. Okay. I, I, I hope so. Uh, mm -hmm. Paul Yi, I want to thank you very much for uh, being a part of our uh, Program. You're welcome. Thank you for giving me this kind of chance. And I, I hope we will be able to talk uh, later when you get back to, to China and we can further talk about uh, what you're doing and things of that nature. Uh, I'm sure. I, I, again, we're uh, uh, talking with Yi Paul Peng. Uh, he's a staff employer at Teaching and Learning Administration uh, at The Ohio State University. Uh, sharing his experiences growing up in China. I'm Patrick. I want to thank everyone for uh, listening and viewing in, and we will be seeing you next week. Thank you. <laughs>